Hi, I'm William Sheckle from the Chambers Rescue Channel, and today we're going to talk about how to inspect a stove you're interested in buying. If you're on the hunt for a new Chambers, you know, you can scour every listing and everything always says, oh, worked great when we put it in our garage 20 years ago, or uh, used it every day back in the 70s. You need to know what it is you've actually got in front of you. So I want to walk you through how I assess a chambers when I first see one so that I can determine is it restorable, is it a part stove, am I better off just walking away. This C90, the C90 has the high back, light back here, rolled into the shop for restoration so I needed to give it a, a, a condition report before I began so that the owner will know exactly what kind of work needs to be done. So let's take a look at what you need to do. When you first walk up to a stove, it goes without saying, the first thing you're looking at is, uh, is the cosmetics. Are there any chips in the front? Here we see none. There's no chips in the porcelain in the front here. So then we want to look at the side panels. This is just grease, as is that. You can tell it just fell off. And you can feel if it's bumpy and the bumps rise up, then it's grease coating uh, on the porcelain. If, the, if, if they feel more like divots, that's chips. See two really good big chips here and something scraped along here causing a dent and a gash right here. Now, if this is being installed up against a wall on the left hand side, up against a wall or cabinets on the left hand side, no big deal, nothing to worry about. And of course, if you're able to look on the back, obviously I have mine in a dolly. You want to take a look here too. This is pretty typical. And because this is a C90, it has a light and this is the original plug and it's completely frayed. Whenever you have 70 year old wiring, it's not that complicated to, to rewire a lamp. Don't plug it in to test if the light bulb works just replace it, then test later. There's no reason that you can't have a, a working light fixture on a stove, but you don't want to use brittle, cracked, 70-year-old wiring to do it. Next, we want to check the chrome from the top to the bottom. So we're going to start off by looking at the shelf. And you see some pitting. Now, a lot of pitting will come out with a good polish. There's a few automotive restoration tricks that you can use to get chrome to look as good as it possibly can again. You don't always have to re-chrome just because there's some minor blemishes. Stovetop itself is nice and shiny. want to check the thermo well lid for any holes that has a divot. Something dropped on that, but it is not a hole. And the pilot cover is almost always filthy. But again, this all feels very bumpy. Degreaser should clean this up nicely. Pilot light is present. And all the handles and knobs are present. Now we want to check to see if these work. Now note right away, as I reach to grab for the handle, we have two different things going on here. This is the original handle unbroken with this piece of pot metal in between that was a terrible idea because it always broke. This is the same three piece handle, but notice how it wobbles. The pot metal that's here has broken. So we know we have a broken handle. So the, the griddle may or may not lift. And that may be an issue with the handle or the mechanism for the broiler. Hey, it works. Needs only a little encouragement to come up. It's got the broiling pan. It's got the drip pan. Now here's something important. When you examine the broiler, you wanna look along this seam all the way around. The reason is, this is a great place for moisture to catch, and you see right there, 
that is a screw having rusted through the screw hole. That's going to require repair in order to make sure that the broiler stays where it should. Again, that is not at all unusual. You don't have to replace the broiler. You can fix a bracket in there so that you can use the original screw, a bracket that stretches from about over here to over here. The screw holds it in place and then we'll hold the broiling pan in place. But you wanna know whether or not this is an issue you're going to have. So otherwise, that looks nice and clean. Now let's look at the burners. Probably the most important burner to pull up is the front left because it gives you a good view of the side of the broiler box, the top of the oven, and the valves. So we're going to take these out and look inside. Grab your flashlight, grab your phone if you have to, and take a look inside. So what we see is it's really dirty and it's a little rusty. But hey, the flash tube is there. May or may not be fully intact. We see the gas lines are in there. You can look in to see the valves and the thermostat. Look under the front right broiler as well. This is where you find the serial number plate. And you can see all the gas valves have some corrosion on them, but these are brass. That's surface corrosion. That's nothing to be too concerned about. The gas lines don't look bent. The jets are all in place. We can see flash tubes hanging down. They probably jiggled loose during transport. You want to go and look in the thermo well, and hey, surprise! The lucky owner of this stove bought a stove that came with a thermo baker. Thermo well looks grimy, but everything looks intact. And of course, an inspection of the thermo well lid should always check for pops, cracked seams, or other holes or defects. If you've got a hole in your thermo well lid, it's not going to function the way it should, so you're gonna, you are gonna—you'd need to replace it. This one, however, is fine, just has some denting. One of the biggest problems almost everybody has with uh, buying an old stove is it's in somebody's basement or garage, you can't test it. So what do you do? Well, you grab your flashlight and you look inside to see if you see any broken lines. So here we see the pilot line for the oven. This is the gas line for the oven burner. If we keep looking in, you see this coming down here, this wire? That is the, thermos the thermostat catheter. So that runs from the thermostat into the oven. And if that line is unbroken, all the way to the back, you see it go into the oven wall, just above that metal washer in the back. That's all intact. Your thermostat is very likely only going to need calibration. What we do then to make sure is open up the oven and check in there. Now we see the thermostat clips have broken off. The thermostat itself is that little tube-like thing hanging down way in the back but it's all there, it's not broken. That means we can fix this. As you look around the oven, it is normal to see this be bronzed, this oven door frame. It was originally painted silver, and then over time, the paint gave way, and the cast iron door frame seasoned into that bronze. You can also see the oven floor has seen better days. There's a lot of wear to that enamel that is a prime candidate for seasoning. Of 
course, if you want, if you prefer a shiny black enamel, you can re-enamel that as well. Personally, I find seasoning cast iron parts that have worn out to be a more cost-effective and uh, a more cost-effective and longer-lasting solution. Longer-lasting because the original enamel gave way, as you can see. Seasoning will not, and if you have to. And if you have to reseason down the road, you'll probably still have the same jar of Crisco that you had the first time around. Either way, I know this can be fixed. And then, hey, look, there's part of an idle hour cookbook. I see the gas line, and I see that this is all nice and structurally sound. There's no rust holes. There's no major dents, the walls aren't bashed in, nobody abused this and then tried to cover it up. This is just an old stove, but it's in really nice shape. One other thing you should think about that is very important for you, that is less important for someone like me. I know if I'm buying a stove, I'm buying it to restore it. So I don't bother checking the valves because I know with certainty I'm going to rebuild them. But you should always check the valves, and that means Press down the thumb latch and turn. Turns hard, but it does turn. None of these are seized, so, but they do all need lubrication. Turning kind of hard, and you can hear that that spring needs lubrication. But each one of these valves is turning free. Well, not that one. See, this valve is completely seized. That's not going anywhere, and I'm not going to force it because I don't want to break it. But again, if you know you're going to do a complete re restoration on the stove, this is not a deal breaker. If you want a stove that's ready to go in your kitchen, this is absolutely essential. When you check the oven, hear that metal clamp uh, clang sound? That's the oven damper plate. Now that we heard the oven damper plate move, let's take a look at the bottom of the oven itself. So I'm going to take the rack and the oven baffle out. And there we see the inside of the oven. Burner. It's looking nice and solid and intact. Everything looks a little dirty. Let's take the oven burner out. And now that the oven burner is out, we want to check the really important oven pilot. Now this is not a standing pilot. The ovens are on the chambers are match lit, but this pilot keeps the oven burner lit while you're baking or while you're cooking. You wanna make sure that this is intact and that the space around it is not rotted out. Very often I see stoves where there are rust holes right around the pilot because when people cleaned, they didn't, they didn't dry. They figured, oh, it'll just bake out turn the oven back on, and over time, moisture collected around here, and it eventually caused pitting, and then that pitting rusted straight through, and then all of a sudden you have to repair your, repair your oven floor. And a little note, you can tell that this oven has been repaired in the past. These two screws are not original. At least they're not on any uh, C uh, I've ever seen. If you've seen one like that, please let me know because this is new to me. So I'm gonna assume this is a later day repair because this got loose and they didn't know how to fix it. Maybe that's an idea for another video down the road. And that's really the most important stuff to look at when you're examining a new to you chambers. Remember, an unrestored chambers is worth a fraction of what a restored chambers is worth. Don't pay $1,000 for a stove like this this was a great buy at 500. Porcelain's in great shape. It's got really good bones. It came with a thermo baker. You know, that alone is 200 plus dollars. So 
This is a great price for a, a very solid stove that's going to restore it nicely, but it was not ready to be put in someone's kitchen. It would have been a danger to house and home because if they had ever tried to use that back burner, something would have broken. When you break a gas valve, you get leaks. That's what leads to problems that people worry about. Normal use won't cause that. Inspect with open eyes, not just with love. These are beautiful things, and you know, it's easy to get taken away by just how breathtaking they can be if you're, if you're seeing one for the first time, and even if you're seeing one for the hundredth time. Every morning I walk into my kitchen and think, man, that's a beautiful stove. But you need to, ma you need to make sure you're making the right decisions for the right reasons. Some things are very hard to fix. Most things are very easy but you need to know that you're dealing with a stove overall that can be restored and walk into the relationship with your stove with open eyes. Know what you're getting yourself into and you'll be fine. So thanks, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on the uh, Chambers Rescue Channel.